Hello there and welcome once again to my little arty corner of YouTube. It's the 15th of April, it's Friday, it's it's before nine o'clock in the morning. It's been a while since I've been drawing this early in the morning. But um, it's, well, the weather, it was misty half an hour or so ago and that's cleared a bit. There's high clouds so let's see if I can get this done before the bright sunshine comes and messes up the light. So I quite like it as it is, that diffused light you get through high, high mistiness and light clouds and so on um, for drawing. It's also okay for my mood because there's enough, enough golden light peeking through just to give a slight golden glow out there. Anyway, my name's Angela, I'm Angela Porter. Um, I'm an artist now, I used to be a science teacher and I'm best known for Colour Me series of colouring books that were written by Lacey Mucklow. I did all the artwork and um, plenty of books in the Dover Creative Haven series but many others as well including a book I did where I did, I did all the words as well it's called Dangle a Day and I haven't done Dangle Designs much. I think it's because the book was published a good couple of years ago but I used to be a teacher you can take the woman out of teaching, but you can't take the teacher out of the woman. And I think after time, I think I'm finding my way with how I would like my YouTube channel to be. And it's that kind of almost tutorial feeling or that encouragement to draw along with me. I'll break things down step by step, hopefully, so you can see what I'm doing. So you've got a chance to have a go at drawing for yourself and finding some confidence, particularly in finding your own way of drawing things, because I'm a great believer that we should all do things in our own way. They may be similar to other people, but they're not exactly the same because it's our way of doing it. And of course, if you're familiar with me, you soon will be if you stick around. But I love a bit of whimsy, a bit of stylized. I love patterns. Um, I love creating little worlds that don't exist, but just put things that I enjoy together and make me smile. I, I do believe we need a lot more whimsy and things that make us smile in this world. So um, here we are. So I've got my sketchbook here and in this sketchbook with you, I've been doing lots of things. There's been flowers and fungi and foliage and fish. Lots of Fs there. Lots of Fs. And carrying on with the fishy theme. I'm not doing more fish today, but I thought if we're going to have a whimsical world with fish, although I have fish often flying through the air, it's quite nice to have other things perhaps that are from the sea or the ocean. So let's see about drawing some things like um, shells and sand dollars, sea urchins, things like that, that we can use. And they're all fairly simple when you break them down. If I start with, a re we've actually drawn sand dollars without realising them. And so I'm just going to start with a circle. That's easy. It doesn't have to be perfect because nothing in nature is, exa is exactly perfect. It's those imperfections that make it what it is. Then in the middle, I'm just going to put five leaf shapes like that and then I'm just going to draw some lines that travel straight to the edge but then if you can see I'm just making them curve down a little bit so on this side I'm curving them towards the right and on this side I'm curving them towards the left and here and here they'll be curved a little bit towards the bottom and at the top, it doesn't matter which way, it's just a little curve. It'll work either way. And that just that little bit of a curve just gives that idea that we might have a bit of a, a thicker or a or this this part just slides away, so we're coming up to an edge that is lower than the top. I haven't got a finer pen out, but I will get a finer pen. I want one that will actually work. I was writing one yesterday got to work out which one it is and I flattened the end so it was only on the end it would draw and it was way too wide so we can just split these here as well so there we are really really simple 
kind of sand dollar. Let's have a look at varying this just a little. What about instead of doing these as distinctly separate shapes, that we perhaps do them as if they're joined up and make them curvy. So we're going to do a, a wobbly five-pointed star, really. Five blobby-armed star shape, like that. If you're not sure about doing that, by all means pencil in the star shape or the branches of the star and do this one little bit at a time. Is there they use that start narrow, go wide, come back to narrow, and then we'll join them with little shapes. Let me show you how I can break that down even more. So I'm describing what to do and it's easier to show you. So if I start by arranging five U shapes in a star, they don't have to be perfect. Again, with these Ooh, narrower tops. It's much easier if you rotate your paper, but I find sketchbooks really difficult to rotate. So I've got five U shapes arranged roughly around a circle. You can draw that circle in, you can draw lines in if you want them more evenly spaced, or just like me, the work seems to work itself out. And then join these lines with little curves going back towards the middle, like so. So we get a different kind of shape going on there. And we can do some lines going to the edge and again curving them as if they, this surface is curved. It's not perfectly flat, but if we add a bit of a curve, it gives them some volume. We can also put things inside these to add to the pattern and even pop one there and perhaps instead of lines use dots to connect these to the edge. I'm starting with a larger dot and making them smaller as we get to the edge. Again that is a way of making things look like they are further away than they are. Do you know what? My phone is having a heck of a pinging time this morning. So that's quite nice. I like that. I like these ones. This one here, I'm going to just put this in here and perhaps some smaller shapes in there. Just nice and simple. Colour will bring these to life or shading or texture, or a mixture of all of these. Uh, let's have a look at doing another way of creating some sand dollars. I said we're going to do shells. You can see that I'm likely to end up doing just a lot of sand dollars. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put five circles in a ring, but these are going to be my starting points for how I grow that five pointed pattern out. Instead of drawing lines or dots, I'm going to draw little rectangular boxes that gradually get a bit bigger as we go towards the edge. And I'm going to try and keep them more or less in line. And if we have a different number of them radiating out from each of these dots, I'm fine with that, to be honest. If they touch, that's fine as well. Anybody comments, you go, well, that's deliberate. That's how they were. Because they're bound to happen in nature where you get things that are closer together. So that's got that five pointed pattern going on there. And I think I might like to just perhaps Join these up and put lines in between them. I often like to do this and separate things into smaller areas. It instantly gives complexity, but it also makes it easier. I am so sorry that's off screen. See, being the cluts today. 
I think you got the idea from what you could see. Oops, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, right, so I add lines because it not only adds that element of complexity and structure to, to what you're drawing, but it also makes the spaces you need to add colour smaller, or it gives you spaces to add pattern and texture. So here I'm going to just add a couple more on either side of that central line. If they are a bit, you know, like that one just comes together there, that's fine. I live with things like this, it's all right. It's a sketchbook. And if things don't quite work out, well, you know, they join together, that's fine, we just work with it. And I think I might do the same with this, but I'm going to do something a bit different here because I've got these lovely shapes here and they are just calling to me for a kind of teardrop shaped section, as it were, or shapes we put in there. So I'm not joining the ends, you could do if you prefer. I'm going to leave them that little bit open and so I've got something else that's going on there. I like that. That's fun and I'm going to add some dots here. And for this one I think what I might do is put little curved lines in so I get these overly eggy shapes there and just have a single line going down to the outside edge like so. That is ready, ripe and ready for some pattern to go in. Now, I think I will start drawing straight lines. You see how I've added these shaped lines here that go in the same direction as this curved bottom. And I can just continue adding those until that space is filled. So using that central line there as part of the pattern I create. I like that. That works quite nicely. So let me do that in the next section very quickly. Where these lines meet, the lines I'm drawing, meets that central line. I am making them join up more or less. But I'm not so worried if they don't. In the lower parts of the sections. So, well, some simple way of adding some pattern and texture there and using shadow and highlights will ha really help to bring that out. With these, there's all kinds of things we can do. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop some perks in and allow that line to run through the centre of them and work out eventually a way of making it part of it or of using it as um, just leaving it here as a way of saying well this is something I could do here so next time you draw this one don't put the central line in In fact, drawing perks in these sections is quite fun and interesting, I think. So, I was going to say, remind me to move my sketchbook when I get towards the other side. So there we go. There's a circle and I'm going to pop in... These are kind of seed pod or teardrop shapes. There we go, teardrop shapes, five of them. And I'm going to just draw the shapes out. Oops. 
like so. And then I'm going to pop two lines on either side of those lines I've just drawn, just to make these spaces that little bit smaller in between, possibly. I'm thinking I could actually do with smaller spaces again, so I'm just going to split them into very silly small spaces. So let me get the other pen, my for and let's pop some perks in here. I want to make sure I'm going to pop these in or the first one in. Put the first one in about halfway in the middle of this each section so that I can tuck others behind it as a way of getting that sense of volume, dimension and so on. So it should work as if this is the highest point of our sand dollar and then the other parts are falling away. Not going to do all the sections, just enough to let me know that that is something I quite like. The other thing is to, with these sections, is to fill them with simple textures. Kind of fill it, filler patterns. So this is the Zentangle Pattern Shattuck, which works nicely there. And Betweed would work nicely. Betweed is this one where you draw along a line up to the up towards the top. Let me just move this slightly so you can see. I, I usually start on the left hand side, but I don't think it matters. So I've drawn a line and then just allow it to bend towards this side of this space. Then we go to the left hand side and draw towards the right. We keep repeating this to create this lovely woven pattern and this I think would be my favourite pattern to use on these. There's just something lovely about the way it fills that space and the texture it creates. I could do it starting from the middle and working out but I don't think there's enough space in these, that, that one in particular, to do that. I'm going to leave the other ones empty. I don't know if you've noticed me doing this a lot in my sketchbook. If you've watched me before, you'll know this is something I do. I don't think I've ever explained why. Or perhaps I have and I've forgotten. <coughs> Excuse me that I've explained. I often leave them blank because I might want to come back and add a different pattern in that I think, ah, oh, that would work perfectly there. Or when I'm adding colour, something will come to me. So I've got the option to add more suggestions, more ideas. Because this really is, I use my, I'm using this sketchbook more for gathering ideas and putting suggestions and trying things out than I am anything else. It's true. It's how it's working. Okay, let's start with a circle in the middle. And this time I'm going to draw these lines in, five of them. The sand dollars, starfish. I've all got a, sim a five fold symmetry, either five or ten, um, depending on how you know bodies are split up and so on. But five's the lowest number, because five's a prime number. And um, so it's always nice to remember that and to start with that, and just something simple like this. And I'm going to. create almost leaf shapes here. So I'm starting at the point or at the top quite close together and then I'm going to add curved lines on either side to create these very skinny leaves where the perhaps the pointed end of the, of the leaf is 
is snuck under this central ring and I will create a ring there. And this then has, op has opportunities that I could create an extra line here. I could actually, let's try this. So by auraing this space, I create a border between this area and the leaves. So I'll do another one that's like this. So that gives me opportunities for adding texture or different colours. But instead of here, I've started the lines, or I've had, got these lines of that, that area connected to the centre. What about if we do this in a, in a different way, where we start with lines connected to the outside edge, but they come around and back to the outside edge, they don't connect with the centre. So we're creating that all around border in this kind of way. And then there's also the option of creating that space there where we don't connect the lines, where it's just completely floating. I like the idea of adding another shape in there. And then this lends itself to playing around with thicker lines and shadows to add dimensions if these are layers in some way. Here, I'm going to cut these away so it feels that I've got a window into the inside of this. So here I've thickened the lines to the top of this section on the right. Here, here I've thickened them to the left and the bottom and it just it just gives you that different view of how these these could work or how they they um yeah i just like playing with things like this and each section can be textured as you wish so i'll leave that as it is for now i'm not going to add any texture um other things we can do well that's a bit of a lumpy bumpy circle but only a bit of a one Let's give a border around it and perhaps a circle and these like that. But then I'm going to use little lines to connect them just to split this area up. I'm using solid lines, I could have used little dots or line, lines parallel, you know, sort of like um, going this way. Not, could use dotted lines as if it's a line of sewing. But I just think there's so much you can do. And these end up almost looking like this one. I'd be quite happy to use this as the centre of a flower. So, let me do this again. very quickly. I'm off camera a bit, move it back, there we go. Remember to check eventually. So just a smaller version of this. I'm not using the best pen today. And then put some petals around and we create a sea urchin flower. Things that are imaginary that don't exist in nature, for me anyway, free up my use of colour, my my because if I'm trying to create something I can see, I feel I have to match that colour and the complexity of things. I find it hard to filter things out. But when it's whimsical from my imagination, I find it a lot easier to do. These are not an exhaustive list 
of sand dollars or sea urchins. I'm going to call them sea urchins because sand dollars, I think, are a kind of sea urchin. But there's certainly not an exhaustive list here. There are so many more that you could do. Um, I think I will do just one more here, though, because all of these I've kept pretty small. But what if we make them really quite large? They end up looking more like flowers. So all I did was I put a central dot in and I've drawn these kinds of flattened, flattened bottomed teardrop shapes or petal shapes. And I could just join those like this to give those separate spaces. And again, that would make a lovely centre for a flower. But that's quite fun. I like that. OK, let's move along to some shells, perhaps and um, see what happens with those. Um, scallop shells can be a really awkward thing to draw. A simplest form of one, I think, would be where we draw a shape like that. So I drew that arc down there, flat line and arc. The other side, more or less the same. And let's just draw this here. This reminds me of, I think I've seen this kind of shape used in quilting, but it also reminds me of shapes in La Tene. It's part of, it's a, pattern, it's a shape you almost get from well, the Zentangle pattern. When you mirror them next to each other, you get these kinds of shapes. It's also a ginkgo leaf kind of shape, isn't it? So let's give it some stripes and then on the side you know you've got those funny little wings you just pop some shapes on like this now I actually like that I think that's lovely and stylized and simple and it's it's fab but this idea of these shapes like this of having sides that go down and up and then you get a pencil. Now, I'm so well organised today. I say this every time, don't I? I'm so well organised. Maybe I've got a pencil here. Actually, there was one right on the top of the pile. I just couldn't see it for looking. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to join these with a A line. This will eventually work. This is one of these no knock pencils that are supposed to advance the lead there easily. And then what I'm going to do is going from the centre, I'm going to create a section from the centre and then separate these out roughly equally on each side and then join them at the top with little shapes like that and then again here a little triangle shape I've drawn the top, top line roughly straight it curves towards the bottom just a little bit and this one I've just given it a bit more of a curve but they could be just square and straight. And then, let's just add some pattern in, as in split these spaces up. So we've got areas that we can change the colours in, or add pattern. And I think that'll do quite nicely, though I think I'd rather like a thin one right on the edge. To feel that I've got that border there. It's quite simple. Um, let me have a think. Instead of having straight lines there, we can have curved lines. And again, I'm going to use a pencil just to join the top in. 
because I find that really helps me keep the top nice and even and with this one I'm going to use the curves of the sides to help to curve the shape of each section like so and again I'm just going to gently curve these edges yep it butts up against my flower dollar flower urchin flochin flochin and there we are we've got a slightly different version again instead of triangle shapes let's just put a semicircle there and it just suggests those little bits that stick out and um I'll add a couple of these. Quite a wide section here at the moment. That's because I'm going to go back and add auras to these inside them. Just to make that space smaller. So if I add any sort of textural pattern here, which is what I'm about to do, for pen then I do like to have these borders between the patterns I just think it really does help to um, make sense of something that's just my preference so here I'm going to fill this section with Some perks again I say again and obviously an awful lot and it's just like errs and ums isn't it I'm aware I'll try try not to be so obvious about things not using those terms but I put the first perk right in the middle so the others can nestle, nestle in behind it I've got a very skinny one here and I'm fine with that one but then these other sections, I've got opportunities of putting different patterns in, perhaps. So here I'm just going to fill that with little lines. I could leave that as it is. But one of the little patterns I like to do is almost putting a black square at the top of each section, but alternate, you know, sort of like black square, leave a space, black square, leave a space, right the way along. And then in the in-between bits, put that black square at the bottom. And it gives an interesting kind of pattern going on there. And up here on the edge, I'm going to fill this with little arches. going to go and just fill these little gaps between them in like so not perfectly but fairly much so and I'm just going to pop a little line at the bottom of each one it just adds that extra bit of ink just suggests like a shadow, almost like this is tucked underneath. So quite simply, we've got a really interesting kind of shell from what was really a very simple shape. And the same's true for the others. So I think I'm going to I'll add an extra one here and perhaps pop an edge like this there and then I've got these spaces in between that I can do something with 
So here, I think I may, that would work nicely there. Thing is, we can alternate them. So I'm going to fill the outside one with lots of little circles, but in Zentangle is called Tipple. But with lots of little circles, like little bubbles all squashed together here. And I'm going to do that on every other one. And now I'm beginning to, as I do this, remember that if I want to help to create an illusion of curving, if I make the ones in the middle that much bigger, then I get that highlight in the centre of the space and the smaller ones towards the side add some shadow. It sort of, it needs to be fairly exaggerated in some ways, but these spaces might be a bit too small to work with or the pen I'm using is just too thick, but you get, I think you get the idea when I mention it. It's not critical and then at the in-between sections I'm going to use some lines to fill those spaces in. I'm going to leave a bigger area in the middle that's free of lines and have lines really close together towards those edges and automatically that's bringing that feeling of curvature there. Um, with these I think I might do between And I think I would be able to do this in each section. Here I've got some larger spaces on the edge, so I'm just going to add some extra lines there just to break, to make them a little bit smaller. Um, almost as if these haven't met or they're, they're being held underneath the band above, as it were, they're disappearing underneath there. That works nicely. So they're not overlapping here, but the next pass will start to overlap. It just then negates those big areas that you can get in the corner of Betweed. Just how I make it kind of work for me. This is a big area, so there'll be quite a few of these before we start to overlap. Here we go, we're beginning to overlap them. But I think that's okay. And the last section. Starting to overlap. And I quite like these with just these single sections with patterns in. The colours will add to the others, which I think is fun. So there's a couple of scallop shells. Again, it's about playing with these and the shapes and the ideas until you get um, to something that you enjoy. Now then, I can see that I've done 40 minutes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some colour, so I'll be back in a moment. Okie dokes, I'm back. I'm just going to, as I talk, rearrange things a moment. Um, I want to add some colour to these. Now, you know I complain about myself a lot when it comes to colour, is that I find it difficult to add colour to things or to choose colours that go together at times, and I end up with a terrible mess. Um, I, and I'll continue doing that because I just don't, I just can't seem to get that right unless I'm going fairly monochrome or very limited colour palette. But I came across these pens. Um, let's see if I can find the name on them. There we are. Um, in a browse around. And they are watercolour markers, which means they've got watercolour ink in them. A bit like my... Ecoline brush pens. 
They're bispectrum noir, they're called tricolour. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy them, but what spectrum noir have done, have put together three colours in each, each pen that work well together. So basically, you've got three pens in each one. And I bought the four sets they have. There's three, three of the tricolour pens in each set. So you get, no, is it three or four? Four. Because I think you get 12 colours in each set. No, that doesn't work out. Or does it? Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it's three in each set. So you get nine colours in each set. There's four sets. So overall, nine times four is 36 colours. And of course, they mix and match. But having them put together is actually very helpful. Um, this is what these are warm, fiery, and we've got um, sunset crimson and the other one is gold and they do work beautifully together um, another one I'll just grab out this is um, these are called earthy neutrals so there's chestnut desert and topaz I haven't swatched these because well I don't but they are craft um, quality which means that if you were going to be doing professional work these they're not as I say that it's not so much professional, it's that they're not as highly, that the, color, the colours aren't as intense and perhaps not, they're certainly not as clean and pure as, say, the Ecoline brush pens, but then they're a fraction of the cost. So, you know, but they work well enough for this kind of stuff. So, when I blend colours, I like to blend, well, I say I blend, I may not blend them, I may just use them. Let me move my pen, my book where it is, and I will use, here's some gold. Now, my one thing I will say is that you need to work pretty quickly with these because they do tend to dry um, a bit quicker than the other pens, I have to say that, and they tend, they, they feel like they grab the paper a bit more. That might just be me. And of course, I am not using watercolour paper. This is not, this is paper isn't designed for wet media, but it's for sketching. And I just go, don't care, it's a sketchbook. I'll do what I like in my sketchbooks. I'm having to work these hard to get them to move. So the paper's beginning to pill, but the colors do work nicely together. So I've got a nice color gradient here. Um, the other way to do this is to put these onto a palette and um, pick the colour up from the palette with a damp brush and spread them that way. And that would negate this need to work them quite hard. But, you know, you, you can still get that gradient going. So they, they were, really are useful for moi. And so I think I will. Oh, I've got a I've got a silicon gra craft mat down here, so I can pop these on to the craft mat. Well, it's a silicon mat, whether it's for craft baking or anything else, it's just silicon. I like to use these rather than paper or anything because they, they sort of stick to my desk and don't move around too much, which is what I need. And they give a nice colour because my desk can get pretty scuzzy. So, that was using the, the darker colour picked up on the brush so it's paler and it's easier to blend them. They're very vibrant colours but as I say I'm not saying you go out and buy them um, because there isn't a lot of need for you to do that unless these are something that intrigue you. Another set here is this is the rich floral and we've got purple, hot pink and heather. I'm guessing this, this says purple. And that the purple is heather. That's confused me. But not, I put it this way, I'm easily confused. Um, I don't know what colour sand dollars are. I don't think we really have sand dollars over here in the UK. Um, but this is my whimsical world, so I can make them any colour I want them to be. The same with the, sea, with the seashells. If you ever look at, you know, I've got a couple of books of um, seashells. 
and the colours that you find in them are quite remarkable. There you go. I'm just adding a little bit of that. Um, so I had a bit of the sunset colour left over here. And that blends nicely into that one. I like that yellowy colour I've got there. So I'll pop some more of that. I think it's, yep, it is the sunset one, which is an orangey colour, an orange, a pinky orangey colour. And um, I like that. And perhaps I'll do the same. I'll pop some of this on my mat so I can pick that up. You can see me doing that off here where I've been putting it. I have actually got a nice craft. I've got, a, I've got a couple of glass craft mats. One of them has got a white area for a palette. It's a black mat with a white, white area for a palette. And did I think to get that up here? No, because it's glass and it reflects light. But either way, it doesn't matter because I know what the colours look like and I can see well enough which colour is which because I'm only using two of them here. But they do blend quite nicely. And like all, all of them, if you want more colour, you can always add more. My problem is the paper I'm using, but it works well enough. So that works out quite nicely. I think these would... The, these Adding colour just brings things to life. And, um, oh gosh, I've got this the other way round. Okay, we'll work with it. That'll be fine. Let's add some at the bottom. It'll be all right. You know, I've got a quirky sand dollar here, which is fine by me. I can live with that. I think any of us can. Quirk. Grab some quirk every now and again. Who's to say there's not a sand dollar that exists anywhere that's like this? Well, it most probably doesn't. But in my imagination now, it is it is definitely living there. There we go. I've got a bit more water flowing from the pen, which is helping as well. So just do this last section. And it'll be quite washed out with the, the purpley colour. Because I've just about run out of it here. Okay. The extra water that I'm using means that I'm getting a much more painterly effect than I am on its own. So I had intended to repeat the colours all the way around, but there we are, not paying attention to what I was doing. Using a blue craft mat or blue mat to put colour on means that I get confused easily. But I'm okay about confusion. Okay, let's have a look. Where were they? So, just putting a light wash of colour here to begin with, and then I can pick some more colour up to add to the outside edges, the outer areas, to darken them up. And that then leaves a highlight of colour there. We have a look. Let me use this one. I've got. I'm going to get some of that crimson out, which is a, a deep red. And let's add some of that to the edge as well, just to darken that colour somewhat. And perhaps just add a bit more, going towards the middle. Um, sorry if my arm goes across. I put my tissue over here, which was a bit daft and everything. And I moved it over to the side here. And that means then I've got that kind of highlight left in the middle. So again, the highlight is what pops things up. Um, I think I'll do a similar thing for this band. A lighter colour to as a wash just across and then we can start adding darker colour in and spreading it out and then the red is darker again just pop that in there just the right very corners there so it's dry but I can still go back and add that in and let's have a look here 
this one's dried so I'm going to have to be a bit careful to preserve that highlight so I don't go still need to blend those inks out and then some of that red just along the edge to darken it up so even without adding colour to the um, to the other sections, the pattern sections that, that colour I've added has already started to shape this um, one thing I do want to try and I know it's going to work but if you know me, you know what I'm like I do like to potch and potter around with things, don't I? Oh, where is it? Oh. oh, there we go, that'll do. Ugh. I've got um, a 6B pencil here. So let's have a look at adding some shadow to some of these and then adding colour over the top. So with these, I'm going to add shadow to the bottom so I want those to feel that they're further away. This is this has got all kinds of stuff on it that I don't want to make use of. Let's have a look. Oops, I have to throw a brush somewhere. That's better. This is graphite. So I'm just going to move the graphite into the paper and just spread it towards the center a smidge. Just a smidge. Technical term, term for just a bit, just a smidge, just a smidge in, like that. And then let's have a look at what happens with these colours. There's, there's interesting colours, there's one called, this is called complementary. And so you've got an orange, green and purple and they are, comp, you know, they sort of like a vaguely complementary to each other, I suppose. Strange. Okay, let's go for the amber. simply because I can pick and choose what colours I use. And if this works in a similar way, which it will, then that grey underneath adds an inten a more intense shadow below the colour. And it shows through because I'm using watercolour and watercolour is translucent, or transparent. And they're watercolour dyes as opposed to being watercolour paints. So depending on the paints you use, they can be really quite transparent or they can be, they can have a bit of, um, if they have pigment in them, there can be a bit of pigment that is um, uh, it's opaque. So you can lose some of the, the clarity, especially if you're using the watercolours in a, a very in, in intense kind of way. It's, it's what they are. So there we go. I'm not sure I, well, I'm sure I do will like that. Let's add some shadow in between these, combining the use of Sort of um, pencil shading and the use of colour and see how I like or don't like this. I'm not entirely sure. I might have been better off using the matte graphite pencils because they would give me um, a better, they're, they're blacker so they work a bit better than that. Oh, I haven't used this one. This is a rich neutral. I've got a burgundy here, so I'm just spotting some of that down onto the craft mats. And I just think I'm using the most intense colour towards that area. And then in this case, I'm just going to leave, I'll leave the edge light. If I go back and grab my pencil, perhaps in the next door section, I'm just going to add a little bit of graphite along the outer edge to give that a bit of shadow as well and then you can compare the difference perhaps that makes to how that section feels you can actually see it just with the graphite is that we have that darker color there but 
I also want to get a bit more colour on top of that graphite and try to fade this out so I've got a lighter area just about here in between them. Just needs a bit more colour I think. Just drop that in because there's a lot of ink or water rather here and just let it do what it does. So we end up with a more painterly feel as well. That will need a moment or two to try. I am going to add some graphite shadow perhaps to the bottom of these perks. And I put the shadow mostly inside these little um, ink lines here so that I had Do want to get some shadow where they overlap so I'll just use whatever's on the paper stump here dotting on just to add that shadow and then I think I may pick this colour up please and spread that one out a little bit trying to keep a highlighted area but as they react with water always, I can always come back and pick some of the colour up. So this is more like a wash. And let's put some more colour in the bottom. In fact, I may actually use some of that burgundy to darken the colour at the bottom and in the shadows. I think that would work quite nicely. And as there's plenty of water, the paper's very wet. I'll just let it spread out as it wants to to give me those interesting patterns that you get when water spreads into water or colour spreads into water. You making use of the properties of that. I'm not so keen on the colours because I'm mixing matching colours that perhaps I shouldn't mix match, but that shadowing makes it that much darker and helps, like here. It helps to add that um, feeling of volume. You can do it with colour. You can do it by adding darker colours, using a lighter colour where you want highlights and shadow, or you can do it this way, or we can do it with pattern and texture. I'm just going to add some water to my mat here so I can clean my mess up before I make a bigger mess. There we go. Always clean your mess up. This is dry. So with this, I'm going to use just a, uh, you know, this is the O4 Pigma. And then I can use this to add perhaps patterns on top of the colour. So with this one, I'm just going to add some tipple because that large expanse of colour just looks uninteresting to me. I just feel it needs a bit more going on in here. And I'm drawing these circles much larger than I have done, say, here just to partly to fill the space quicker but I also get these spaces in between the larger circles that I can fill with smaller ones to increase texture. Perhaps I won't do I might be able to get three of them there. What am I missing? Not that one, that one, not that one. I don't know what is going through my head here. But we can, there's an odd number of sections, so I should be able to. Oh no, I can't, can I? I should. My brain is not functioning now. I think I need more tea. So I'm coming, I'm nearly done. 
long video today. So I've got that. Yeah, that it's, it doesn't work for odd numbers, does it? <laughs> Not in a circle. Um, and I could just fill all of them in this way, perhaps. Perhaps. Make, trying to make a difference somehow between the sections. And perhaps using smaller circles where I put the lines in and larger circles in the middle. But it just adds, I think it just adds interest. So this one. I'm going to simply pop some lines in where I leave a gap with a dot in to break those lines up and I'm also making the lines bend and mirror but this is the awkward section is that we need these lines to be almost straight in the middle and gradually bend towards the right and towards the left on either side of the section. This section will be a lot easier because the lines bend in the same direction. Like so. So that's really quite nice. Um, this one, I think I'm just going to pop shapes like this in, perhaps. Perhaps with a larger one next door. And in some cases that's going to be the last one. In others I think I'll just need to finish it with a line. But those are fun. Those will be fun to add some metallics to. And I can also add a pattern here. Now this is dried. You can see that this one it has a bit of dimension to it, but it feels that this is perhaps a bit higher than this one. Whereas this has got a low point here and a low point here, so it feels that it's curving upwards, perhaps to here. And I, I like that. Um, these have worked out quite nicely, actually. That, the graphite tones the, the vibrancy of the colour down. And it does add that shadow, so I think I like that. So it may be something I play with, say play with, I experiment with, because it's it's not just playing around. I'm learning as I do this, I'm trying things out. And that may work out nicely going forward for shadows and others. So I've only done some sand dollars or sea urchins and a couple of just two sort of clamshells here. But hopefully I've given you some ideas to carry on with this exploration, to try things out for yourself and to see what happens. The patterns I'm using to fill are patterns I use time and time again. We've got straight lines. I, here they're arranged in chevron shapes. Um, but here they're just straight lines, but the distance between them is giving me it's helping to give me that feeling of volume is to suggest that these these sections are curved and rounded and quite quite sharply as well big highlight in the middle smaller highlights they look softer and flatter or flatter is what I'm, I'm trying to get I haven't got much of a highlight here but that's what white gel pens are for or I could add a little drop of water hopefully there's some water there and then just use some tissue to pick it up and you create little highlights as you go like this once it's dry you might need to work the color a little bit but you can see how i've got highlights on those two but not on the others so nothing's ever lost when you're using water soluble media i like these pens i like the fact that they've been put together in colors that work for you even though i've completely ignored that in most cases and um Sometimes I like it when other people do the thinking for me when it comes to colour. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you can gain something from it. 
but more than anything I hope you'll pick up pen and paper and whatever materials you've got to add colour or shadow highlight and just have a go and play experiment try things out and have fun fill your page of circles and see how many variations with a five pointed star or five five lined star in the middle whatever it is you can get until you fill your paper and then go back and add other lines and patterns and colour and shadow and highlights and I'll see you again soon so take care for now bye bye